Good morning. I'm Reverend Becca Gorell, pastor of the United Community Church of Morrisville, Vermont. Welcome to a time of worship and reflection. We've been in ongoing reflection, ongoing conversation these past few weeks, discerning who we are and what we need, what our community needs in the midst of the, the crises around us and through which we are living, who God is calling us to be as a relatively new congregation, coming together with common purpose and vision to support the children, the youth, the families of every kind in our community. And in the midst of these changing circumstances, asking where and how is God calling us to do that? It's a question as much about who we believe God to be as it is about who we are and what we are charged to do. In fact, in many ways, who we understand God to be and how we understand God to act and move in the world is foundational, is inherent, is a, a, an important first question in understanding the rest of the equation, in understanding our role as God's people and God's church. Now, sometimes we think we can find out about ourselves in, in uh, silly, fun ways. I think people, a lot of people have been trying to uh, use up time on the internet uh, during the pandemic. And so I'm reminded of those little quizzes on Facebook and places like this that will say, you know, uh, guess these certain things or tell us these certain things about yourself. And we will guess your age or where you're from. So I, it turns out I'm definitely from Vermont based on a quiz about typical Vermont slang. I know what it means to go down cellar, and apparently that's all that's needed to, to be a true Vermonter, even if I was born in upstate New York, but I got here as quickly as I could, I promise. But then on a different quiz, I was asked to, to select which foods I liked or hated out of I don't know, there were hundreds of foods, I think. And apparently my food tastes are so eclectic that, that the program could not figure out where I was from. It ended up saying I was from Louisiana and I've never even been to Louisiana. So sometimes there are less helpful ways to try to understand ourselves. These silly quizzes promise us that if we know enough, if, if the quiz knows enough about us, it will be able to tell us something about ourselves. Once we give a little information, it will know who we are. And we, we have lots of, lots of computer programs and algorithms that try, to, that try to do that. But Jesus promises this in a different way with his disciples. He asks them to tell, that, to tell Jesus, to tell him something about who they understand him to be in a way who they understand God to be, how they understand God to be at work in the world. And from that, then Jesus is able to tell them, specifically to tell Peter something about himself. Now, of course, Peter is called Simon before this encounter. And here, how Jesus asks something about Simon, what Simon believes. And by understanding what Simon believes about God, Jesus is able to, to, let, to let Simon, to let Peter know who he really is, what he, Jesus, understands about Peter. This reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, starting at verse 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my God in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone 
He was the Messiah. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, we say wherever we are, thanks be to God. Amen. Who do you say I am? Jesus asks his disciples. And Simon, gotta love Simon Peter. Simon is bold enough to try to take a stab at it. And he gets it. The disciples don't always get it. We, the church, don't always get it right. But in this moment, in a flash of inspiration, Peter understands, Peter sees, and Peter proclaims who Jesus is. And in that moment, Jesus turns it right back around and tells Peter who he is. You are a rock. That's what the, the, the name Peter comes from, the root for the word rock. You are a rock, and on this rock I will build my church, and here is your mission. Bind and loose on earth as it is to be bound and loosed in heaven. You will, you will be the church, and no force can stand against you. The gates of Hades, of the, the underworld as it was understood at the time, cannot prevail against the church as you will build it. Now, we are asking how are we called to build the church? We're trying to build a new church in the sense of, of our two congregations from two different denominations having come together a few years ago, but forging a common identity, mission, vision, purpose, and being that church together in a new way with deep roots, deep foundation in the bedrock of who we have been. But we are also called to build a new church in another way. In the midst of the pandemic caused by the COVID-19 coronavirus and all of the isolation and hardship that this has caused and the disparity that we see in our, our communities and our, and our society and our world that the, that the virus has broken open, has revealed the need among us and among the whole world in a different way. And we are going to need to be church in a different way. We are called to build, to co-create with one another and with God, a new church, a new body of Christ, a new way of being relevant, life-giving, transformative presence of God in the midst of the world, as the world is now, as the world has changed, as the needs have changed, and as our understandings of ourselves, of God, and how God works in the world have changed. And so we began with some questions, first some questions about ourselves, but also these were questions about how we understand God. Our first reflection question was, what are you learning? In the midst of this learning opportunity that is the pandemic, what are you learning about what sustains you spiritually? Another way to ask that question is, what are you learning about where and how you see God at work in the world? Where do you experience the presence of God in the world around you and know that it is there? Where do you feel God's presence in your life and feel sustained by the power of God's love and grace and strength? So we ask that question, which is really a question, it's a, it's a form of the question, who do you say God is? Who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say the Creator is? Who do you say that mysterious Holy Spirit is? How do you know and experience God? Who is God for you? And we asked, what are our, our gifts, our resources? What are the blessings God has given us? How is God going to be at work in us through the world, or to the world, through us, and the gifts God has given us? So we took stock a little bit of our resources, our resources individually and as a community. What are we learning about, about our own challenges and struggles and the resilience we find in them? and through those struggles? How are, we, how are we letting God make us stronger? How are we not letting go of the challenge until we see God's blessing in it, until we see 
the face of God. And here, again, God name us and claim us. Notice how that happened to Jacob too. Changing his name from Jacob to Israel, one who struggles with God and prevails, and struggles with humans and prevails. Right? So how are we learning, growing, being stronger through struggle? How is God at work? Who do we say that mysterious challenger is in our midst? Is God one who pushes us to the breaking point or one who calls us to a better part of ourselves or a stronger part of ourselves? And then we asked about our community. How, what are we learning about the needs, the changing needs of our community and our world? Because needs are changing. And those are needs, not just literal, tangible, physical, logistical needs, but also the need, the hunger, the longing for, for human interaction and connection, for what the church is called to be, for the body of Christ, the presence of Christ, the presence of God in the world. There is, there is need, there is longing, it looks different. What are we learning about the needs of our community? Where do we see the need for God? What would we say that is? Now, I believe that, that these questions, these questions about who is God to you, who is God to me, how, how does God bless us and equip us for work in the world, and, and what is the need, what is the specific mission field into which we are sent, these are questions that, that have many, many answers, and the answers evolve and change over the course of our lives. It's one of the things I love about, about faith, about religion, about, about philosophy. Is why I went into the study of philosophy and religion as an undergrad, because I, I wanted a field where it would be impossible to, to ever capture it all. And what I, what I love about faith is it's impossible to ever capture it all. Trying to, to know the fullness of God and God's blessing and how God works in the world is like chasing the end of a rainbow. We can never reach it, but we keep pressing forward. It is, it is shooting for the stars and, and landing among them even if we don't quite get to where we thought we were going. And so these are questions that we, we're answering in a moment right now. Who is God? Who do you say God is for you right now? What do you see as the needs in our community right now? What do you see as the blessings and the gifts and the resilience that God is giving us individually and as a community so that we can be the church right now? We say really that, that Christ is the foundation of the church, right? And then in turn, Jesus says to Peter, you are a rock upon which I will build my church. But we are the building crew. We are more rocks to add to those strong walls, those walls that are big enough and inclusive enough to hold all the world in love and service. And so Jesus is saying to us as well, if you have a glimpse of who I am, if you have a glimpse of who God is, how God is at work in your life, in the life of the world, where God is needed, then let me tell you, let me tell you a little bit, O oh church, about who you are. You are rocks, sturdy and strong, rooted and, and deeply connected to the legacy of faith and courage and resilience and grit. And you are the building blocks of the church and you are the building crew of the church. And so now, now we have to listen, we have to discern, we have to reflect on all these questions we have, we have been struggling to answer for, for this moment. What do all of those answers taken together about where we see God and how we know God, how we, how we have been blessed what our resources are, where our resilience lies, our struggles, the struggles of our community. What does this teach us about what we must do and be in order to become, in order to build, in order to co-create the church as it is being built in this time and in this place?
because God is constantly building a new church. We're just seeing a, an even bigger example of that right now. And we are the ones called to do that. If we have even the merest glimpse of who Jesus is, if we have even the merest glimpse of, of who God as creator and sustainer is, of how the Holy Spirit is moving through the body of the church and through the world, if we can even begin to, to, to grasp that, if we can even begin to experience a small part of it, which I, I pray we can, I pray we do, I think we do, then God's got a message for us. If you know even a little of who I am, I know the fullness of who you are. You are building blocks of a new creation. You are the ever-renewed, ever-rebuilt church, the body of Christ on earth. And so now, in the midst of all that we are learning about ourselves, about God, about the world around us, what does this teach us about what we must do and be in order to co-create the church with God, the church as it must be in this time and place. Jesus does not offer a silly, shallow quiz or a quick fix about how to know about ourselves and certainly how to know about who God is and how God works in the world. But Jesus does offer this. When you know who I am, even a little bit of who I am, he says, when you know even a little bit of how God's grace is poured out into the world, how God's love incarnate is sent into the world, then you become part of it. You become a foundational piece of it. You become building blocks of the recreated church. You become with me the body of Christ. Jesus is naming us and renaming us, claiming us and reclaiming us, and through us, with us, is building and rebuilding the church that is needed right now to bring God's grace and healing and justice and mercy to all the world. Let us listen, let us serve, and let us get to work stacking those blocks on one another and creating a church of today and tomorrow. Amen.